there was some stuff out there that potentially C.D. Lamb could hold out. He was looking for a new deal, entering the final year of his rookie contract for the Dallas Cowboys. But then, you know, TMZ to the rescue. They caught up with C.D. Lamb and said, yeah, I'll be in Dallas. Uh, seemed like he was excited to get ready for the season and looking towards winning. And it just feels like that on top of, I don't know if you guys saw the other rumor that was out there that Micah Parsons, apparently there's some issues with his attitude there in Dallas, according to a report in Dallas uh, on the fan that apparently might, it just seems like this off season, Dak Prescott's contract, uh, the Jerry Jones stuff with his off field crap, Mike McCarthy have an answer about why he doesn't have a, uh, anything after this year, as far as a contract goes, it feels like there's just a lot of stuff already on the plate for drama when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys this off season. Mm. Usually we wait until like August and now we're already here. The Dallas Cowboys are that organization that's just kind of all over the place, right? Like, if you go through their history, at least recent history, of players and the deals that they've done. So, Zeke Elliott, well, how was it, two years before he was even close to hitting free agency? Yeah. They redo his contract. Um, that was that six-year, $90 million extension, I want to say in 2019, After which a, a lot out. of people were surprised by. Right, it was his rookie deal. They didn't feel like he was really necessary, or it went against the the precedent of what a lot of teams would like to do in that case. But Cowboys still did it, and Andy held Mean- out. <laughs> what do you where do you go? Mango deck is that what it's called? Something like that. Yeah. Meanwhile, Dak on the other end of the spectrum, a guy who from the time he was a rookie, similar to Zeke, also showcased that he could be their guy. They make him play this whole thing out to the point where he's able to then convert into a huge contract that is as player friendly as could possibly be. And so CD Lamb now finds himself going into the final year of his rookie deal. And I think you have two examples. There's frustration on the part of him and his agent with the fact that you've seen this organization with the running back position already agree to an extension long before Lamb has gotten to, and Lamb obviously has been everything I think they'd hoped he would be as a first-round pick. And then you've seen them also let this thing play out with a quarterback who at that point in time in Dak's career had done everything that he could possibly do, yet they still end up cashing in. So, you know, there's probably frustration, but I think he knows that if he continues to ball out and play well, there's going to be something there for him on the other side. I just wonder with them not getting a deal done with CeeDee Lamb by this point, does it have something to do about where this organization feels like they're at? Mm. Like if, if they're going in all in on this year, letting things play out, Mike McCarthy, Dak Prescott, everything. And if things don't work out, do they just knock it all down and rebuild mm. and try to flip this whole thing over? Or are they going to stay steady and stay the course? I, they, can't, <clears throat> they can't do that. That C.D. Lamb will get signed. He will get an extension or a new contract, whatever it may be. He's going he's gonna to be a Dallas Cowboy. He's literally the, the one lone shining star on, on that offense. One shining. Yeah, right. That's the theme today. I, I, don't, I don't see How'd it, it playing out where. How would it play? How would you say? How would you say, Jonah? I don't know. I refuse to do it. I hate oh, it. Dang it. Oh, it was so I good. I hate it. Why? It was good. Like you were on beat. Tone was good. Like it was. It was a nice. Yeah, it's stuck in my head now because you guys played it. He's the How's one it? shining piece of that offense. I try. I track you. Anyway, uh, so the the idea of it is you sitting there smiling, a little silly smirk. Uh, <laughs> I want to slap it off your face. Anyway, yeah. but <laughs> dang. But but C D Lamb is going to be. Uh, a Dallas Cowboy. Micah Parsons is going to be a Dallas Cowboy. Yeah, why is You're he talking got... about their two best players, and all right? Why is your guy Micah Parsons got such a bad attitude uh, in Dallas, uh, LeVar? Like, uh, I'll tell you reports. who has a bad yeah, attitude. Is it his reputation or uh, representation? Or what is it, LeVar? Yeah, what's... <laughs> it might be his rep- <laughs> representation. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It's the first I'm hearing of this. Honestly, I didn't know that people were accusing him of having a bad attitude. Micah is is one of those dudes. If you don't know him, you might be like, you know, you like questioning what type of person he is because he's he's pretty quiet 
and and he's not like you know he's just not like all out there like that like he's just kind of like i want to say like a tad bit socially awkward you know he's one of those type dudes where you would mistake it for being arrogance like when he says like oh this is too expensive going to this theme park and stuff like that he really means the stuff he'd be saying but he means it from a very very normal person perspective Mm -hmm when people don't look at him as being normal. So when you hear somebody say normal perspective stuff, everyday Joe stuff, but they're not normal, then it, it comes down to your interpretation. Do you, want, do you want to hear the report? Yeah, All sure. Right, so, yeah. so this is from Sean and RJ in on the fan in Dallas talking about the Micah Parsons rumors. I have heard from way too many people this offseason, way too many. I'm talking about at least at least four different people that Micah has worn thin there. Hmm. Now, I don't know how much is true and how much it actually hurts. I don't know whether this is the behavior of a typical superstar. I don't know how damaging it is, but all I do know is this. I've heard from way, 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 from way too many people. If Micah Parsons was out of there, there'd be a decent amount of people inside the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco smiling or breathing a sigh of relief. Hmm. Now, well, let him go. Des Bryant saw <laughs> that. Let him go. So Des Bryant saw that and wrote on social media, this is what they do when it's time for your contract to come There up. you go. Oh, that, I mean, they're trying to... I, uh... I mean, it sounds like a negotiation ploy, but, <laughs> but here's my thing. Doesn't that say something about the culture of that team? Yes. If you've heard yeah. from too many people yes. that you'd be all too happy of Micah Parsons, he's your best player rats you got rats in the building if you had a, a a listing of best players from one to five michael parsons takes up one through three and then you can start with <laughs> cd lamb after that that is dumb that's the dumbest thing i've ever heard dumb like why? why would you even put that out there about your your star player like it's dumb so yeah uh, anyway I don't... that's i don't get that I, I, I hate when this kind of stuff uh, gets floated out there. And so I, I don't really care, to be honest. Like, when people say this sort of thing, it's like, okay, l- 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 let's just be real, okay? This is a Dallas Cowboys organization that brought on Greg Hardy after all of the accusations and Talk allegations that took it. place before. Yeah. So let's not – sit there and try to then talk poorly about a player who's on your roster that you drafted, who's been everything you'd hoped for on the field. Okay. And is not being accused or has not done anything anywhere near to what you've signed in the past. So let's just, let's stop. Let's just stop with the character assassinations when this kind of stuff comes out, because this is absolutely ridiculous. And if it is about the contract, it, it doesn't surprise me. It just disappoints me that this is how teams would continue to operate, especially the Dallas Cowboys, since, you know, they, they seem to take care of the guys that show out. The problem is, you know, they've got multiple guys they've got to take care of. They've got to take care of CeeDee Lamb. They've got to take care of Micah Parsons. There's other considerations on that roster. And so they're in a tough spot. And what do you got to do if you want to try to make it all work? Cash over cap. You're going to have to pay out huge amounts of bonuses to appease the player, the agent, in those negotiations. And what does that mean? More money's maybe even guaranteed that come out of the owner's pocket, go into escrow, but more cash out of the owner's pocket. And no one wants to do that. No owner wants to see that. So it's. I hope it's not the case. But I, let's I, let's be real. This Dallas Cowboys team has, has brought on guys who have way more questionable character, which you should draw into, into question, you know, everything in regards to their decision-making process and bringing on some of those guys in the past. I wonder how many players get worn thin of just the constant drama there. Like, stuff like this always, like, there's always a story in the offseason. There's always something like it. And I get, I guess, you know, Jerry Jones loves the branding and he loves all that. That's why they're the most valuable franchise on the planet. But I just wonder how many players are like, dude, like Dalton Schultz made it. He said, yeah, big difference was in Dallas and Houston is in Dallas you're working out and people are taking tours while you're trying to get a lift in. It's just a weird, like, the whole thing's weird. And I just don't see – and when we make the point that they could be t- potentially tearing it down after this year and just rebuilding, I'd like – and I'm not trying to be morbid here. Does Jerry Jones have that kind of time? 
like to right. wait around for them to to rebuild. Dang, bro, do you just kill him off? No, I'm dang. just saying. Like, I mean, like dang. No, I'm turn, just turn that turn that uh turn that dang, Augusta bro. music the back masters? on. <laughs> turn that masters music <laughs> I'm back on. Just saying. Let's dang, talk dude. about this with you the know? masters like, music uh, on. I don't. There look, we go. Tell, say just, it now, Jonas. Say I it just, now. I just look at it and I go, Dak Prescott's been there a long time. Yep. But it feels like 2016 is a far cry from where they are now. Mm. Micah Parsons is pissing people off. Mm. Stick City is not only a place, mm. but it's got a bad attitude apparently too. Dang. C.D. Lamb has to talk to TMZ to get his side of the story out. Mm. And Jerry Jones may or may not have another kid. <laughs> wow. <laughs> More. Oh, no, we went there. This, this fall. Was, this is this is this, so this man's uh, uh, obituary. Like what? We're More. playing funeral music, man. This fall, live from Dallas. That was more Brian Gumble, man. That, that was, was beautiful, that was, though. You did. You put. You put Jerry Jones in the casket, bro. <laughs> I didn't 